Right, welcome back YouTube. In today's video, all I'm doing is a quick update. I've been doing little bits and bobs, nothing major. The biggest thing I've done is the cam cover with the breather set up and I've got the coils and everything. I'm gonna cover that in a minute. Before I go over that, I'm just gonna go over any other little bits and bobs I've done. Obviously, what you can see, the turbo is on now. Um, it may have to come back off. We're setting little things up, but I'll put it on. Um, I've Cerakoted the cold side in Glacier Gold Cerakote. I was going to powder coat it, but it's a bit of a pain in the arse to powder coat it just because of how you mask it and stuff. And I'm thinking with the black and gold I've gotten already um, and the fact that the turbo kind of sits quite low, so you're not really going to see it that much. Uh, the Cerakote's also got the benefit of the, the heat. Um, I've Cerakoted the hot side as well. I've Cerakoted this in Glacier Black Cerakote. So basically this side, I'm hoping the Cerakote will stop the heat coming out. Um, and this side will stop the heat going in. How much of a difference it actually makes. I mean, I've mainly done it for the, for the looks basically. But <clears throat> if it stops any kind of temperature, even a little bit, it's a bonus. Um, so yeah, obviously the turbo's on, both sides are coated, one's gold, the other side's black to match the manifold. Um, so that's it for that side. On the other side, I've put some auxiliaries on, which we'll flip round now and I'll show you that. So here's the other side, there ain't really a lot to show you. Obviously, Cerakote black on the, and the alternator, Cerakote black on the uh, aircon pump. I am keeping aircon because I'm daily driving it, I'm not going mad with it. Um, and then obviously I've just done bolts, the bracket was already gold, the belt, bolts are gold, the tensioner. Um, the tensioner's got the pin in, I did actually go to put the auxiliary belt in, but the one that I, the auxiliary belt I had was wrong, it was way too, way, way, way too short. Um, so I'm going to have to uh, get a new belt, so <clears throat> I'll have a brand new belt on it and I can pull the pin out and that'll be done. Uh, you can't see, but around here I put that electric water pump on. Um, but yeah, that's it, other than the cam cover, which is the main bit of the video, which I'm going to cover now. Um, who the fuck calls up a garage on a Sunday at like half four? <coughs> Some people, man. But yeah, anyway, we'll get on to the... I'll, I'll bring the camera up and we'll go over the cam cover, and that's pretty much it for today's video. I will talk you through a bit of what what the next plans are. I'm just doing little bits and bobs. I can't put the thermostat housing on yet. I've, I've ordered a ECS um, aluminium water pipe or what people call the crack pipe uh, that goes across its sandwiched in. So that's on the way. When that comes, I'll fit that in and the thermostat housing can go on. Um, I really need to sort out the gearbox, putting the, the upgraded clutch pack in and getting it painted, uh, get the dual mass flywheel on. Uh, I've got a new one, LUK one. Um, so that will all start going on because there's a few things I can't really plan properly until the gearbox and everything's on and stuff. It is a little bit awkward. Uh, the other thing I'll just show you quickly as well is the lube. Uh, you'll see again in a minute when I go over the coil packs and stuff. But obviously you've got the fact that I've got different injectors so the plugs have got to be changed. Um, and obviously the way these sit now with the coil packs is going to be different. So... <clears throat> I'm basically, I'm, I'm using the OEM Lou because the, the, the standalone that I'm getting, the Emu Black, is a plug and play. Uh, so it'll just plug into the normal OEM Lou. But there is obviously certain things that I ain't going to be using no more, uh, especially to do with like the EVAP and the breather system. And so there's going to be certain plugs I don't need no more, uh, which I don't want to cut off, but I just want to hide them, if you know what I mean. I don't want to cut them off just in case I ever need them in the future. But I don't want to, I don't want to, um, I don't want to just leave them dangling or whatever where you can see them and then obviously the way the coil parts are going to go and just because everything's moved and everything's different I'm basically just going to, I'm trying to strip the loom back obviously I'm going to be taking all of this off and I'm just going to re-tape it, rebind it so everything looks clean I'm just going to take different routes with certain wires and stuff so I'm not necessarily going to use the OEM route even though I'm using the OEM loom so I'm just going to kind of strip them back so I've just been going around like obviously like the coil packs and stuff I've just been numbering them I numbered all the the injector plugs and stuff so when I start switching them over and then just little things like because it's easy to tell where stuff goes because of the layout of the loom but once you start stripping it all down you might not be that easy to tell where to go I mean most plugs only fit on one way because they have the the little peg or whatever but just, just 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 to be safe really so i've just got stuff like inlet cam s which is just inlet cam sensor so 
um, and then just got like VVT black, VVT brown because um, the different colour on the plugs. Um, just going, just little things like that, just writing it down like exhaust cam sensor. Um, just so when I strip the loom back and then start retaping it, I know where definitely everything goes. I haven't done this whole loom yet, but that is another thing that's, that's going to be done. Um, so yeah, just going through, trying to line it up. Obviously got like rear knock sensor. So yeah, I'm just going to strip the loom down and I'll rebind it all as clean as possible and try and root it as best you can. So just, I'm just trying to make as less of it visible as possible, basically. I'm just trying to make everything look clean. So I'm doing that in the kind of background a little bit. So but <clears throat> yeah, without any further ado, we'll spin around to the top and I'll go over the cam cover and the, I've got the spark plugs and coils in now. That's probably the biggest thing I've done so far. So uh, since the last video, I mean, so yeah, we'll get the camera up, we'll have a quick look at that, um, and yeah, that'll be it for today. The next video, I'm not sure what it'll be, but it may be doing the gearbox, because that is coming up, or it may be the loom or something like that, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that after. Um, I just, it's, it's, it's awkward, because there's so many little bits and bobs I do here and there, that it's not easy to always record it, but I'll try and cover it as best I can. So yeah, let's move the camera around, and we'll have a look what I've done with the cam cover. Right, so here is the cam cover. One of the, you might not be able to see very well with the camera at the minute because it only does it when the light hits it properly. But the cam cover has been coated in um, Prismatics Universe, which is basically a holographic. So when you shine light on it, it's all holographic. It's a bit dirty at the minute. I really could have done with wiping it down again. But um, I've got photos and I've got videos of how good it looks. So what I'm going to do is I'll put videos and photos of, the, of it now. you can see see what it looks like now you can see how shiny and reflective it is etc so now you've seen what the cam cover looks like i'm going to go into what i've done basically with like the, the the breather setup for a start so what happened was for a start off i fucked up a little bit so i don't know if you've seen in here but basically in this little tower bit that stands up that you've got like a a, a plastic piece in here that's got like a diaphragm and then you have your normal oem fit in there for your brake breather system that then go to your intake manifold obviously that's all gone away and what i'm going to do is i'm going to be doing a catch can setup so i'm going to atmosphere so i've just got two fittings that will go to atmosphere well what i did at first i just had straight an 10 fitting straight at the top so they just came straight out these are the ones i've actually put on the fuel rail now i was lucky enough that they fitted there so i've been able to use the fittings but yeah what i did was i put them in here and then I looked at the original coil pack, obviously the, the, the normal coil packs, the, the plug is directly on the top with the loom. Obviously I put that in and I thought when I put the, when I put the plug on, it's gonna, it's gonna interfere with these uh, because they were coming straight out. Um, I thought going with the right, to be fair, I wanted these ones anyway. Um, I wanted the ones with the right angle on and the red and they look quite nice. They're no, I, I wanted new coil packs anyway. These, the, the R8 ones, there is many, apparently there is a performance benefit. Some people say I don't. Whether it actually does or don't, that's not what I bought it for. I think these look better. It'll be cleaner with the fact that they come off to the side rather than straight up, like having them pointing up in the air. I just think everything will be cleaner. So that, that's what I decided to do. Plus they're not any more expensive than the normal ones. But I did think when I went with a right angle one, I thought that it was going to sit down enough to basically clear these that were coming straight out. Well, I was wrong. I don't know how well you can see it from there, but they actually stick up. What I'll do is I'll, the, <coughs> there's a photo I took of when I put these in when I had the straight ones on, which I'll put on now. As you can see in this picture, um, not only did they stick up too far, that is with the coil pack all the way down and it's on top of the spark plug, so it physically can't go down any further. So there, there was really nothing I could do. Not only that, but if you look at the bottom of the, well, not the bottom, but where the, the coil pack goes in to the cam cover, you will see a silver bit. Obviously that's the bit of the coil pack, the heat shield, because the coil pack's not going all the way down. Right, now that you're back, 
you'll be able to see now that they just look all black now. So what I've done is I actually Cerakoted the, the coil pack at the top. Well, I, I, I did more than half of it. So to cover it all in black, just so where it does stick out, you could, you, it's not silver, so it doesn't stand out. So it looks more stealthy. So now it just looks black all around the edge, even though they're, they're, they're not all the way down. Um, to be fair, you, can't, you couldn't really go much further down anyway, just because of the plugs have got to go on the side. Um, so yeah, because I messed up that, what I had to do was, I had to go back and get, I got these fittings instead. What these are is banjos, but these are swivel banjos. So these, these are completely tightened up. The silver bit in the center is what stays, what clamps against. Um, and then these can just spin free less. So I don't know which way I'm gonna go. I could go both that way and off, or I could go up on a right angle, uh, on a right angle go this way. I don't know exactly where I'm putting the catch can yet, but luckily with these going anywhere, I can literally just put the engine back in, put my catch can where I want it, and then just determine where these need to sit in best to do the breather system. I don't know whether these are going to be enough. These are two AN10 ones. The thread was M18 by 1.5. I mean, like I said, I've only going like 650-ish and it's a built engine, so I'm hoping my crankcase pressure is probably not that high. Um, another thing I want to show you what I did in here is I made, um, I made a baffle. Whether it needs it or not, probably not. I just can't, I, because I'm daily driving it, I don't want the catch can to be constantly filling up with oil. So, what I did was I bought a sheet of perforated aluminium. The reason I went aluminium is for three major reasons. One is aluminium doesn't rust. I know it's inside the engine where oil's flicking up and stuff, but you also, if you ever looked under a can cover, you get condensation, because obviously this is where a lot of the condensation happens if you only like doing start, start with me, daily driving it and stuff. Sometimes if you drive it, you don't get that hot. Sometimes you get condensation in your can cover, you get like that, the, the horrible stuff around your oil filter cap. It's like brownie where the oil and water's mixed. So I just thought, I don't want the risk of it getting surface rust or rusting or whatever, so I went aluminium. The other thing, it's easier to cut, so when you're trying to cut it and shape it, uh, aluminium's way easier to cut than something like steel. I mean, you could go stainless steel for the rust issue, but, and the other thing is it's just light art. Again, I mean, it's nothing, it's like a gram if that, but it just makes sense, for, it just made sense for me from the, the fact that it won't rust, it's lighter and it's easier to cut, it made sense to go with uh, aluminium. The sheet I bought, I could have done two with, and it was about eight quid off eBay. Um, if you do want to get it yourself, I went for the one with the two mil hole, you could go one for bigger or whatever, but either way, I'll show you now what I did, as you can see what I've did on there, I've used the OEM screws and the OEM screwing locations. All I did was got a sheet, I just kept doing a bit with the pen. I just basically did it by eye. I just kept grinding little bits off until it fitted. Then I drilled some holes where the OEM screws were and I just screwed it down. I made sure not to go over the oil filler cap bit just because it'll make it super long to fill it with oil. As you tip it in, it's gotta go through the hole so it'll just make it long. So I, so I cut it short because the OEM piece goes all the, all the way across almost. Now you're back. You can see I've gone through everything. Um, obviously on the back side of these, I'll show a photo quickly now as well. As you can see, I've just put nuts on the other side. I've also put doughty washers on the other side with the seal on. Um, so, so yeah, that, that, that's pretty much covered most of it. So I've got the swivel ones now instead of the straight ones. The straight ones are now going to be on the fuel line. I may have to get different sizes because these are AN10. They'll be a bit overkill for fuel lines, but... Um, I'll have to just keep these fitting somewhere. But yeah, I've got the swivel one now. I've got the baffle in there. I've got both the nuts on. We also uh, welded between the nuts just so they don't come undone because they'll have to fight each other to come undone. The other thing is good when you tighten this up, it tightens, I can tighten it up without having to hold a span on the other side because they fight each other. So basically the two nuts that I've put on the back of these, I just put a little, there's like a weld across them. Uh, like I said, they've got diet washers and everything. So hopefully they won't leak or anything. So yeah, it's got the cam cover on coil packs in i've also got the these are the ngk r8 coil packs i've also got the ngk i can't remember the number but they're basically two steps cold rips the one with the, the nine in the iridium plugs i've gapped them to 0 0.022 uh, of a thousandth of an inch uh, whether that'll be perfect i mean it's going to be a lot down to the tuner but he can kind of set them himself i've just done that because it seems to be from my, what I was looking at, a general premise for, for the boost applications to run it anywhere from, I think it was like 0 0.22 to like 0 0.25 or something. So I've just gone with 0 0.22 or thereabouts. 
um, two-step colder NGK iridium plugs. These are NGK R8. I went for the NGK ones just because I like our NGK stuff. I never had a problem with it. The OEM, OEM ones are made by Bosch. Um, I just like the NGK are pretty much the, the the top class when it comes to sparks. So I just felt it made sense to go with these on the core pack. I also, my BMW 135i, I did the Bimmer Life conversion. I use these NGK ones and never had a problem with them. So NGK coil packs and plugs, uh, 2A and 10s for the breather, prismatic universe on the cam cover. And that pretty much covers it for today's video. There's not really much else I can cover with you. I've just put little bits and bobs on, just trying to work things out. I need to get the coolant lines. Um, I did actually get the, um, for the on the thermostat housing, there's like a, where your coolant temperature sensor is. There's also a blank next to it, where you can, you get like a horseshoe clip. I actually got um, an AN6 fitting as well, that goes in that plug hole uh, to take off a coolant line as well. So I'll be running an AN6 coolant line to the turbo i don't know where the return's going to go maybe so i'm going to probably try and return it to where the maybe the heater line is or where it goes back to the header tank somewhere around there so i've, I've got to work that out as well but at the minute i'm at the stage where it's just working little bits and bobs out trying to sort the loom out and stuff like that but yeah i'll catch you on the next video which will probably either it'll either be doing the clip on the clutch pack in the gear box or something to do with the wiring loom or the inlet manifold as well that's my other thing as well the inlet manifold uh, that I showed you, I have the BST Turbo one and it's got the, the all their writing on. Um, what I'll do is, actually, I, I've got a little slow-mo video of grinding that off. Um, you're not going to see the full extent of it, I'll do a proper video next time, but I'll just put in the slow-mo video now quickly. As you can see, we just had it on a service grinder. I decided, I just wanted to keep it clean and smooth. Um, the BST logo, and now it says Turbo After, I just don't really like it. I like the R32 bit, but then it's to one side, so it looks a little bit odd. The trouble is, the BST bit ain't too bad, I could live with that, but the Turbo bit, I don't know if you've ever been in one of them little accessory shops where you can buy the little turbo, the chrome turbo sticker that you see on the shittest cars where they just stick it on the back of the car. The logo looks like that and it just, every time I look at it, so I was going to do a two-tone, uh, maybe do the letters a different colour or maybe surface grind them after and then gloss it after, but in the end I've decided I just want to go clean and maybe put a sticker on it, whatever, so sorry BST, but I had to grind all your logo off and that, I just had to, I wanted it cleaner, so yeah, surface grind the top of that, it's still on the surface grind at the minute, it just needs a couple more files to get it completely flat. Um, that will be getting coated the same as this, so that will be going Prismatic Universe as well, so the inlet manifold will be Prismatic Universe, the cam cover, yeah, so far I'm happy with the colour combo. What do you guys think as well? Well, what do you think to the colour combo? Would you switch anything around? Do you think I did the turbo right? Or would you have done anything else a different colour? Let me know in the comments. But yeah, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.